Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes and today what we're going to be discussing is something called molecular mimicry. We're going to discuss how molecular mimicry may actually be the underlying cause of your autoimmune disease as well. So what on earth is molecular mimicry? Well that's when we have a sequence that looks like the tissue or proteins of something else. For example, we've got a food that has certain proteins in that specific food that actually looks like proteins from another food. Or specifically in an autoimmune case, what we have is a bacteria that has a certain sequence that looks like human genes. So that's molecular mimicry. It's mimicking the other tissue or someone else's genes. So specifically for bacteria, you can see right here I have an example called Klebsiella. Ciela. There's a huge link between a Klebsiella infection and Crohn's and AS, as well as some other HLA B27 type of autoimmune diseases. Well, why is that? Klebsiella actually has a sequence within it that looks a lot like HLA B27. So, when we have an infection with Klebsiella, our body will naturally start producing antibodies to try and attack the, the Klebsiella, get rid of it from our body, what the immune system is supposed to do, which is fight off infection. So when we start producing antibodies against Klebsiella, but Klebsiella has that sequence, remember it has that sequence that looks a lot like HLA B27, our immune system might make a mistake where instead of just attacking Klebsiella, it now thinks HLA B27 is also a problem because they look so much alike. Our body makes a mistake. And then what do we have? A full-blown autoimmune disease against HLA B27. And that's where we start seeing things like AS and Crohn's disease, all those HLA B27 autoimmune conditions. So the bacteria mimics our genes. We naturally will start to attack the bacteria but since the bacteria looks so much like some of our own genes or some of our own sequences, we end up with an autoimmune condition. So it's absolutely imperative to get checked for infections. The best way that I know of getting checked for infections, specific infections, is through a stool analysis. I see Klebsiella show up in so many different stool analysis. And I get a lot of patients who say, well, I've been checked. I've, I've been scoped from my, my primary doctor and everything came back normal. You won't see this type of infection on a scope, but you'll see it on a stool analysis, which is why a stool analysis is so important. Now, to kind of sidestep, there are a lot of you who have probably tried a gluten-free diet. You received, you got some relief of symptoms, but not nearly as much as you wanted. Or you got relief and then things started to go back to the way they were before. That could be due to food mimicry, because this doesn't just happen between bacteria and humans, it happens between different types of food as well. So specifically gluten, which we find in wheat, barley, and rye, has proteins in it that, can, that look a lot like proteins found in other foods. So I have this very nice little list for you right here, that if you've tried a gluten-free diet, you didn't get a whole lot of su success, I highly recommend trying to get rid of these foods in your diet as well. You will see much bigger results. So for example, we, it's called mycord. It's millet, yeast, corn, oats, rice, and dairy. These all have proteins that our body will mistake for as gluten. So if you have a gluten sensitivity or if you, even if you have celiac disease, what I would do is absolutely avoid these because your body is going to think it's gluten. So that is your lesson today on molecular mimicry and how it can relate to autoimmune diseases. If you guys have any questions, please just let us know on our Facebook page. You can also find more information like this on our website, ibrainandbody.com. Thanks guys and have a great evening.